Hello everyone and welcome back. A friend here once asked me how to stay motivated and happy in this daily mundane life. Not that I have a foolproof answer to this, but I still wish to pick this topic today and share a few simple ways in which I try to find joy in my daily life. But let's keep out the fact that the parameters of joy is different for different people. Happiness lies in our own hands they say. I may either choose to sulk in the mundane life or do something that can give this monotony a halt and make me feel better. So while I know there are zillions of things I need to do, I would still steal some moments for things that bring joy to me. It can be as simple as repotting a plant. So when you know the day is getting heavy, try taking some breaks and if need be force yourself to come out of your daily rut as it actually breaks the mental monotony loop and brings the joy back you will not only feel content but will also come back motivated to take up your daily work in a better way It happens with time that we start taking things for granted and that's when the essence of being grateful fades away and as soon as that vanishes the joy in small things vanishes the moment we appreciate and thank anything out loud it works like a reminder to feel that something great just happened and that brings a sudden rush of joy This can be as simple as thanking your partner for making a tea. Yes, this might not be a biggie, but by doing this, we reassure ourselves that something good just happened now. Something that made us feel better. Something that was joyful. And being grateful doesn't take much effort, but trust me, the rewards are huge as they give a lot of satisfaction. As a homemaker and a mother, my every day is filled with a lot of work. Some jobs are that that you can't do away with, but many are not a mandate, yet we worry about them and work with the quest of taking them off. And as important as every work looks, sometimes it's wise to be selective and pick tasks that can make more sense because sometimes being over ambitious kills the joy of winning small. Bed making every day is mandatory. Yes, but I also wanted to organize my chest of drawers as in a few compartments the things are just dumped randomly. But is this the only job I have for the day? No. So instead of doing all the drawers in one go, I would rather aim for small. Maybe just two drawers organized and clean today is my win for the day. And I know As soon as I'll do this, I will have that feeling of joy that I achieved what I aimed for. Emptying a space is the best starting point for organizing any space. I'll use a basket to cover and store all my hair care tools that I don't use regularly. I'll cut the balloon to make the rubber band and use them to tuck the cables nicely. Now my extra toiletries will go in another open basket for clear visibility. I'll also use these old glass jars to store my cotton balls and cotton pads. And the drawer is set. Similarly, If you don't have drawer dividers, here is an excellent trick to organize clothes. Fold them in the file system and lay them in different directions in the drawer. 
and you will have an organized garment drawer without any dividers. Now I'll just dust the top and bedroom will be done. Knowing that less is more is rather joyful than struggling to keep doing more and killing that prospect of joy. So aim small and celebrate these small wins to feel happy. It was breakfast time and I had made some idli batter and thought of making vegetable appe from it. Batter just rises so well here, not only appe but even idlis comes out so well. I usually refrain from making appe as it takes longer in the kitchen. However, I thought of dealing with this issue and finding ways to reduce my cooking time. For the vegetable appe, I'll start by chopping some veggies in the chopper. Dhere got excited to see this new tool and of course, Sir wanted to get his hands on it. In the veggies, I took carrots, cabbage, green chilli and onion but you can take whatever veggie you like. I was so happy with the chopper as the veggies were chopped very finely and the prep time was also reduced drastically. Now in the chopped veggies, I'll add 1 inch grated ginger and the prepared batter. In the spices, go salt, hing, red chilli powder, garam masala powder, black salt, chopped curry leaves and coriander leaves and mix everything well. Now I'll heat the appe pan to cook appe. For cooking, I'll use the cold pressed sesame oil bought from a local vendor who takes the oil in front and gives it. Along with the appe pan, I'll also use the batter to make uttapam waffles. I bought this waffle maker recently and created a few dishes for kids and I'm really in love with this one. Grease it with bit of an oil and pour the batter. I'll do the same in the appe pan also. Using these two tools will not only reduce my cooking time but will also give some variation to normal meal. The waffle maker takes 5 to 6 minutes to cook one waffle at a time and for the price I paid, the results come out impressive. Cooking daily with the same ingredient might not look very joyful, but small changes and improvements bring a lot of happiness. Finding the right kitchen tools like a chopper and this waffle maker made my work so much easier. Cooking time was reduced to half and that time was enjoyed more during meal time. So instead of struggling with old techniques, improving system and finding new ways of doing things can bring a lot of joy. Not necessarily all days will work as per routine. After breakfast, Karthik left for some work and I had to do some video editing. While I needed this time to work, but I also knew that kids needed me too at this hour. So, instead of struggling to do my editing, I accepted the fact that this could wait. I can always resume when Karthik will be back. And a video not going on Saturday can always go out on Sunday. Sometimes during our daily hustle, it becomes important to stop and analyze if what we are doing is really important or it's just our thought. For example, 
I wish to keep the house spick and span all the time and cook new dishes in every single meal. But that is an aspiration. The reality would be even if I set one corner in the day and cook two healthy meals, I would be a total winner. Accepting this fact helps me feel content in everything I do. Accepting reality helps us keep grounded and think better. We do not juggle between aspirations and expectations, rather we start thinking rationally and find better ways to balance our work and happiness. It was lunch time and since Karthik was not around, I decided to make a super simple lunch plate. And in that simplicity, I'll add something that my kids enjoy. So, I'll be cooking pudina curry with masala bhindi. I decided to make basic curry, but to bring some great flavors, I added the mint leaves. The mint leaves were waiting to be consumed today, so I thought of using it in curry and also in the chutney that I'll use to make salad. So firstly, I'll grind mint leaves with curry leaves, 1 inch ginger and very little water. Now for the curry mix, I'll take some besan and add around 1 cup of curd first and whisk it well. For the curry tempering, I'll crush 6 to 7 garlic pods and fine chop 1 onion and 1 green chilli. Now in the kadai, I'll take 1 tablespoon ghee and add cumin seeds, rye, crushed garlic, hing, green chilli and mix it well. Now add 1 teaspoon turmeric, chopped onion and saute till onion turns golden brown. Next goes the mint paste and saute for 10 seconds. Add red chilli powder, garam masala powder and mix these spices well. Lastly, add the curry mix and around 1.5 cups water and keep stirring till the boil comes. This will prevent curry from curdling. Kids love bhindi and this time when my mom-in-law came, I learned every step and trick to cook good, non-slimy masala bhindi. So, thought of sharing it with you all today. Bhindi at times can be a bit tricky, but with a few simple steps, your bhindi will never go wrong. So, let's begin. Always start with dry bhindi. I usually wash them and air dry them before storing them in the fridge. So that when I'm ready to cook, the bhindi is dry. While cutting bhindi, always check your bhindi for any worms. Once done, finely chop some garlic and one green chilli. Now I'll place the kadai on the biggest burner and add 1.5 tablespoon mustard oil. You can choose any other oil too. Now add cumin seeds, ajwain, green chilli, chopped garlic and hing and saute for 10 seconds. Into this, goes turmeric and chopped bhindi and coat the bhindi well with oil. Now here are the basic to-dos. Use the biggest burner but at the lowest flame and cook the bhindi open. It will not create any steam and bhindi will not get slimy. Keep scraping from the bottom and stirring bhindi every 3 to 4 minutes as it prevents it from sticking to the bottom. It just takes 12 to 15 minutes for bhindi to cook completely. Curry is done and in the end, I'll add salt, black salt if the curd is not too sour and roasted cumin powder and mix it well before closing the stove. Once the bhindi starts losing its moisture, it will also release its slime. And that's why we don't cover it to let this moisture evaporate. After 10 to 12 minutes, you'll observe that the slime has reduced a lot. The right indication of bhindi being cooked is when you see absolutely no slime. Rather, some of it will stick to the bottom, but that's okay since we are using less oil. 
Bhindi is also cooked well and now is the time we add all spices to make it masala bhindi. In the spices goes red chilli powder, garam masala powder, coriander powder, amchur powder and salt and mix everything well. Always add the salt in the end to get the right non-slimy texture of bhindi. And that's how our perfectly cooked bhindi is done. I'll now quickly make the green coriander mint chutney with the remaining mint leaves. Next, I'll cut the salad and add a bit of a chutney to the salad to get a very refreshing spicy salad on the plate. I had some leftover dal that I used to knead the dough and make parathas with it. A simple plate of food is ready. Sometimes keeping things simple brings a lot of joy. The meal prepared was not only easy on me, but kids favorite and fulfilling enough to feel happy. So days when you're looking for joy, don't complicate things and keep it simple. From a distance, today looked like an ordinary day, but only if we look closer, we can find those small joys that can make any ordinary day extraordinary. And with that note, I hope today's vlog was helpful to you. Share your thoughts on this topic in the comment section as I would love to read them. Join me on Instagram for some behind the scenes and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Until then, stay connected and stay happy.